I'll be talking to you about cumulative frequency, and especially these uh, graphs. Like this one, my teacher won't say which students did best on a test, but she did say I'm in the 25th percentile. <laughs> That's really bad. All right, so let's look at these frequency tables here. So they keep track of not only how many times something happens, but also keep track of the total cumulative frequency. Cumulative means you, know, you keep track of the total frequency. Let me show you what I mean here. Um, well, first of all, these are really important. You can use these tables, but also these graphs to figure out percentiles, quartiles, and median. So here's an example. So the women's marathon times for the 2008 Olympics. Now, the IB says that uh, we're supposed to be using even class intervals in order to do this. Um, I think I've got an example below that has one of them that's uneven just to play around with that. But I mean, they're usually going to be even. So you notice like two hours, 26 until two hours, 28, and then, you know, 28 to 30. So there's always like a, you know, same interval here. And here we have the frequency. So there's eight of these, there's three of these, there's nine of these and so on. Well, so far, this isn't so, so weird. The only new part here is this cumulative frequency part. That's the new part. So let's take a look and just do this math ourselves, just to play with it here. So let's see, total, total frequency. Well, we've had a total of eight counted here. But notice now, after these eight, and then these three, eight plus three is 11. So you notice now we've got 11. And 11 plus uh, nine is gonna be 20. Notice what I'm doing here? And 20 plus 11 is going to be 31. 31 plus 12 is going to be 43. 43 plus 7 will be 50. And 50 plus 5 will be 55. So that tells me, ah, there's a total of 55 people here who are counted. But this can also be useful because we can make a conclusion like, uh, for example, this one right here. Let's just say, so we can say, ah, we know that 50 people uh, ran uh, in under, we, I guess we could say, in under uh, two hours and 38 minutes. So this is kind of nice. You can sort of tell anything like this number 50 tells you that there's 50 who are here or less. That's what it really tells you. That's kind of a handy thing to do. So this way you can kind of figure out some different numbers like this. That's why this cumulative frequency is helpful. Even more helpful though is these graphs. So let me show you these cumulative frequency graphs. But I like this with the USBs, right? It always seems like you plug them in the wrong way. Well, if you still use USBs. Um, so the following diagram this time will show the mass in kilograms of people in a room. Um, I know it's supposed to be weight. I guess I should say weight, shouldn't I? Here. I'll say weight. It's just because I'm a physicist and I don't like the word weight. It should really be mass, but we'll call it weight. So the weight of people in a room. So here we go, we've got this graph here. I did it by hand, so it's a little bit dodgy. On exams, you'll get much nicer graphs than this, but here's the idea. On the x-axis, we have the mass here, or the weight. I'll call it the weight, even though it's technically the mass, because the weight would be times g, and you'd have to have it in newtons. Um, so we'll do the weight in kilograms, so from 60 to 120, and we'll have the cumulative frequency. So if we're doing this, you know, counting up everything. So can we see... Um, Here's maybe an extra question I should have asked. How many people are there in total who have been uh, had their data looked at here? So how many people have we looked at in total? Can you see we would just look at the highest number here and say, ah, that's 120. There's been 120 people counted in all this here. So the question would be, what's the median weight? What's the number of people who weigh less than 70? How many people weigh greater than 90? And what's the interquartile range? That seems really hard from this. You might think, oh, God, I need a calculator for this. But no, no, no. The trick that I always try to tell students to do is start off by assigning, yes, although this is 120 people in total, I assign that value 100%. That's my hundredth percentile. And that means exactly half of that then will be 50th percentile. So you notice if this is 120, that must be 60. So this right here, this right here will be the 50th percentile. And I split this up even more. That means half of that. So uh, let's see, 0 to 60 is half of it. So half of that will be at 30. Does that make sense over here? So at 30 right here, this point right here, that'll be the 25th percentile. That's 25%. And halfway between 60 and 120, which would be 90, that'll be this value right here. That'll be the 75th percentile. Now why do I do this? Because this helps me to know a bunch of stuff. This tells me, what's the 75th percentile? Ah, that's Q3. 
And what's the 25th percentile? That's Q1. And what's 50th percentile? That's the median. So see, this little trick on the right here helps us to pretty much solve uh, the question. We want the median height. What's that? Well, which one is 50%? I go over here, zzzz, and I go down here, and hopefully it matches, and it looks like 80. Can you see that? It looks like, maybe I'll do it in a different color here. Try to go like this to so the median. Let's see, it'll be something like, something like this right here, and then something down like this right here. Notice it looks like it's supposed to be, at least I've drawn it, it's supposed to be, well, actually it's not really 80, is it? It's not really like that. It's sort of straight down. Let me just try to draw it like this. So it's like, not even 80, I'd say, I don't know, let's see, this is 70, 75, maybe, I don't know, maybe 77 kilograms. I mean, it's ish, right? It's not exactly, but something like 77 kilograms. Okay. Let's do the number of people with a weight less than 70. Well, here what I do is I go look at the weight of 70, and I look at, zoop. do you notice in this right here, then it's going to match, maybe I'll do it in a different color here, maybe I'll do it in blue. So this one here, I'll match the 70 right here, like this right here. That's this number, and then I'll go over. And this right here would have been, looks like 30. So that'll be 30 people who have a weight less than that. Isn't that kind of, not kind of handy, I think. Okay, now we want to look at what's the number of people with a weight greater than 90. So we can do that one. Maybe I'll do that one in a different color. I'll do that one maybe in red. So greater than 90. So what I can do is I can take a look at the one for 90. Okay, so at 90, that seems to be about 100, doesn't it? So 100 people below 90. Well, then how many people are above 90? Well, there must be the rest of them. Do you notice that? There must be then 20 people, because you see this from 100 to 120. So there must be 20 people. That's one way to think of it. Another way to think of it would have been to think about, um, here, I should have said people here. Um, Another way to think about it would have been to just look at this piece right here and say, okay, 90 right here. And yeah, just look at anybody above this where you look at anything above this. And you can see directly, it's about 20 people. Now, what's the interquartile range? Ah, well, to do that one, we have to just know what the definition is of IQR. That's Q3 minus Q1. You find that in your formula booklet. Well, I know Q3, let's see, it looks like it's, what would that be? Maybe like 85, maybe? That may be Q3, something like 85. And Q1 looks like it's maybe 70, something like that. So that means the IQR then will be about 15. Now, when they give you a graph like this here, they usually give a little bit of room for sort of, you know, getting the answer, you know, slightly wrong or something like that. But I mean, uh, this is actually pretty close. This has been kilograms, by the way. That's how we solve this. So I hope this helps. The trick is when you see these graphs, do this on the right. This is the most important piece right here is do this, okay? This part right here, all this stuff right here, this is important. So this this whole piece sort of going all the way down to here, this whole piece right here is the important part. Okay, so knowing how to do this, that's the key to solving is assign the top number to 100 and just go like half of that is 50, half of that is you know 25 and move your way halfway between there. That's how you get your interquartile range, your median, and you can answer some questions on it.